Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys exactly um, how you should be using your HANA calcium checker. I guarantee you at least 90% of you out there using this are using it wrong. You're not using it the right way. Um, you're probably still getting decent readings. I'm gonna be showing you guys a few tricks on to how to get the optimum performance out of your calcium checker. Because let's face it guys, we're all really going for reliability on these checkers. So many times those readings are off, you know, it's not gonna be in the best interest of us and more importantly of our coral. Uh, so today I'm gonna be showing you guys a few tricks that I've actually been talking to, to Hannah. They've actually been teaching me on how to properly use their checkers. Because I think a lot of the talk out there on the Hannah calcium checker is that it's not accurate. And like the whole time I was thinking, I was like, how can a company as reputable as Hannah release a product that just doesn't work. It, it didn't make sense. So I got together with Hannah, chatted with them. I really got down to the bottom of it. And as I was assuming before I had this checker and I was reading those reviews of people saying the calcium checker is inaccurate, it was 100% user error. Um, so today we're gonna clear some of those things up. Hopefully you guys that are on the fence thinking of getting your uh, calcium checker by Hannah, hopefully this video shows you how accurate this is. Uh, more importantly, for you guys that already have this checker and you're just, you kind of don't trust it or you want to know how to properly use it, well, this is going to be the video for you. The first thing you want to go out and do, guys, um, is ask your wife for permission to go buy yourself a new plane. Uh, or for our lady reefers, ask your husband if you can go buy this RC plane because uh, this is going to make it a lot easier uh, to do your tests and I'm going to explain that why here in a little. I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. First things first, as I said, you're going to need your calcium checker, whether you got the newer one. Um, or the older one, obviously here it's gonna be more entailed to the newer one that has this little cuvette that brings up uh, the sample water from your tank. You wanna get everything laid out. Every time I do my tests, I want a nice working area. I like to lay out um, everything that I'm gonna be using. So here's uh, the cuvette, the reagent. We're gonna be using the cloth. We're gonna be using that right there. Okay, here, that's gonna be getting out a reagent. This is gonna be getting our test water. And this here is going to be getting our RO water. So we got a checker here, kind of put it on the sideline. I always like to have the cheat sheet. It makes it a lot easier to have this. I kind of already memorized it, uh, but it, you know, it never hurts to have it here. Um, and then you're going to need uh, some sample water. And this is actually going to be a very, very important thing. It's one of the first quick tips that you want to be careful of. So the first thing you're going to need is RODI water. And then you're gonna need your salt water from your tank. Obviously, if you don't wanna do this, just walk over to your tank and you get your water. But for this video's purposes, this is gonna make it a little bit easier. So going back, it's very, very, very important, very critical. Without this, if you guys surpass a step, you might as well not even do the test because it's not gonna be very accurate. You wanna be sure you're using pure water. Um, Ideally speaking, you wanna get distilled water, preferably the one from CVS. You know, I, I did, I did a lot of homework for you guys. I did a few tests with different distilled waters, one from Rouse, one from Walmart, one from uh, CVS. I noticed, I did about three tests on each one. I noticed with the one from CVS, I would get lower readings in it. Um, and thus, when I talked to Hannah, it's just, yeah, they were tell, telling me there was less calcium residue or calcium or whatever you want to call it in that water. Now, you may use your RO water if and only if Let's say you perform a test with RO or uh, distilled from CVS and then you do it with your RO water. If the readings are roughly within the same range, then your, your RO water is probably good enough to use, which is in my case, my RO water, I'm pretty much getting the same readings as if I use a distilled. Um, so that tells me that my RO water is actually pretty clean as far as having any calcium residue or calcium residue inside it. So that's a very important thing, guys. If you don't do this, if you use tap water, um, or any other form of non-purified water, you might as well not even do the test and pretty much stop right here because your tests are gonna be very accurate. So to begin the first part of the test, make sure you have your RO water or preferably distilled water from CVS if you could get it there. Um, and you wanna put that here in a little test tube. Then you wanna have your cuvette here and then your reagent and as well your syringe is gonna take out one milliliter of this reagent. So it's a good idea to give it a little shake. Not too crazy, you don't want crazy bubbles in there, but just give it a little stir. And then make sure this is pushed in all the way. Give it a few primes, and you wanna put pull it all the way up to the one mil mark. There we go. One milliliter of this reagent. So once you 
put your one mil or you fill it to the one mil mark, you want to add the rest of it to the 10 milliliter mark. So in other words, nine mils of just regular uh, distilled water, uh, preferably. And also a very important thing that actually I didn't even know, guys, it's pretty funny, but I never knew where to stop as far as how the line goes and how the watermark looks. And I'll explain that here shortly. Let me first eyeball it and then I'll tell you guys exactly what I mean. I always wondered, and it was funny because I, I asked Hannah, do you want to mix this up five times? So I always ask Hannah, when exactly do you stop? Let's say that's the line on the cuvette here. That's your 10 mil line. And as you know, anytime you put water in a little jar like this, it always creates this U shape. Excuse my drawing guys. But I always ask them, when do you fill to the, the line to the top of here or to the bottom? And they told me you always do it to the bottom. So in other words, when you're looking at it from the side, it should look like that, okay? Um, and that's, I guess it wouldn't matter if you do it the other way because it's, it's gonna be consistently inaccurate in that way, if that makes any sense to you guys. But ideally you wanna do it just like this. So now that we gave it a, a little inverted a few times, one thing you wanna do is you wanna clean it. Now this thing has to be pretty clean. It's not too, too crazy, but you want it as clean as you can get it. Uh, once we clean it, we're not gonna touch it anywhere in the center. We're only gonna touch it here from the top and here from the bottom because the reading is taken from the middle. So another very important thing that I learned from Hannah, anytime you put it into the checker, you wanna make sure you put it in the same way every single time. And what I mean by that is if we put it in to zero it out like this, we don't want to re-put it in again, turned like that. Because obviously this glass isn't perfect. It may look perfect to you, but when it, the light is shining through it, uh, there may be some distortion. So that'll also fluctuate the reading. So the best way to do it, there's a 10 mil mark on it. You insert it with the 10 mil mark facing you all the time. Okay, then we close it. Hit the button, wait for it to zero out, and we're good. And remember, now that we cleaned it, we don't wanna to touch um, the middle portion of it. We can set this off to the side. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your salt or your test water, and you wanna grab your little cuvette here that, that's gonna pull out the pre-measured amount. Now, another very important thing, guys, is, is this that I'm gonna show you right now. This here has two steps. It's step one, step two. Do not, and I mean do not, draw water all the way down to step two and draw it from there because you're going to be drawing too much. You don't know how many people I've talked about that have this checker that say it sucks. That's exactly how they're doing it. That's where one of the mistakes is made. So remember, when you're drawing water, you only draw to the first step. And then when you're ex or taking out the, the, the water, you then push it all the way down. To get water here, I insert it in the tube. And you don't want it too deep. We insert it and we just go down to the first level and then we come up. And consequently enough, it lines up with that little line. I don't know if you guys can see there. So what we then wanna do is take off the cap to this. And remember not to try to not touch the middle. Then what we wanna do, we wanna expel it to the first level and then push all the way down to the second level. So the only reason they make the second level is so you expel every single uh, amount of water you get in here. So once that's done, we can move the salt uh, to the side. And then we wanna get um, our reagent here. So this powder reagent here, what I like to do is hit it on the, on the top corners. So it, everything works here to the bottom. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick here on how I do this. And it works every time as far as pouring it in. And I use this package itself as the, the pouring mechanism. So make sure you cut it. So one of the first things that's probably gonna help you guys a lot when you're using this is how to open it. I don't like putting my finger in there because obviously you're gonna contaminate it. So all you do is you push like so, and then I pull it, make sure it's nice and even, leave it like this. And then what we do from here, so I grab it with my index finger and my thumb and with my middle finger, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm gonna be tapping on the back side of this, okay? I'm gonna be flicking it. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow all the powder, and it's so hard to do this with one hand. I don't know if you guys can see me shaking the back of it, 
Typically I would be holding the jar, but right now I'm holding the camera. So there you can, I don't know if you guys can see my hand just tipping the back of it. And what that allows, you get every single last drop. So I'm gonna do it here as if, let's assume I was pouring it, so I'd be flicking it with my, either this finger or this finger. And what that does, it allows you literally to pour everything out of there. You see that? There's nothing left in there. So from here, what you wanna do is you wanna cap it. Remember not to touch the middle and you wanna shake it vigorously for 15 seconds, 15. And once you're done, you wanna give it another 15 seconds. What I like to do, I like to turn it over very slowly to work out all the bubbles. You can either do this or just let it sit for 15 seconds. And now again, remember what direction we use. Remember we use the 10 mil mark. We wanna put it back in the cuvette again or in the tester with the 10 mil facing the front. And from this point on, we press the checker and we get our reading. There you go. It's really as simple as that. Obviously after this, you wanna make sure you discard everything. Don't wanna leave anything out, especially if you have kids. I wanna clean up everything. And also last thing that I didn't touch on, but it's very important. You wanna make sure guys, anytime you're cleaning this, you wanna make sure you're using RO or distilled water. Um, do not use water from the from the sink because that has calcium in it. So if you let it, um, if, if you wash it with that, then you store it, there's gonna be calcium buildup on it. That's gonna 100% throw away all your measurements. So be sure you're using distilled water to clean this. Not only clean this, but also you use the same technique to cleaning your alkalinity and your phosphate checker. So really hope you guys got some useful information, especially for you guys that were on the fence of maybe purchasing this, for you guys that already own it. Hopefully I taught you guys a few things on your checker. And we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. I'm gonna have a link to um, Hannah's website, uh, specifically on this calcium checker. You can check up their whole lineup. They also have pH probes, just tons of great stuff to keep your uh, reef tank looking great. That's what I trust my tank with. Um, so I hope you guys do too. So we're gonna wrap it up here. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, Leave them down in the comment box below. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time.